Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here, and welcome to Throwback Thursday. Look what I got behind me today. Now y'all may have just seen this bike in a video the other day, and I called it a TR5 in that video by accident. I knew it was a TR6. This is a TR6, but uh, you know, life goes on, right? So uh, we're gonna talk about this hot rod. We're gonna try to get you some good information on it. It is a bunch of computering and a bunch of talking and a bunch of yapping with some people who are supposed to know stuff. And I'm gonna share with you what I found out, okay? First off, this is a TR6, and this says it's a, I don't know what that is, but that's a 500 right there. And look at that, that's a 64. Look at the paint, the style, it's a good looking bike. Very similar, but look at this thing. So, this is a 1965 TR6 Trophy. We think it's an SR which stands for uh, Road Sport, SR, Road Sport, backwards, but um, let's start with the engine. How do you identify an engine on one of these? I just got done talking to the, uh, they got a machine shop back there, and the machinist, and he uh, said the first thing you look for, check out the front of the engine right here for this nose. He said that's a hollow nose. Uh, instead of having a plate like uh, that bike would have, this says that. Uh, next thing was, uh, you could check for the distance between these areas here. You know, again, if you look at the uh, shifter on the uh, 500 over here, they're right up against each other. There's a better view of it. So here we've got a space. This is a unit motor, by the way. Um, another thing was the shape of the uh, barrels and heads. Very angular, very, uh, you know, modernistic, I suppose, versus this more roundish shape and then check out the uh, just the overall shape of the Triumph part itself. That's kind of the same there but uh, isn't that pretty? And of course there's fins on the heads here or over here we don't have those. Very different over there. Uh, another item that was uh, pointed out to me was the cases. See how these are kind of a roundish less uh, angular. I don't know if you would call those prettier than these. I think myself I think these are prettier. Um, not that that matters, but you know, this has got more lines, angles. It's got these two bolts here, which that one did not. So yeah, there's quite a bit of difference. Um, the TR6 had a single Amal 28 millimeter or one and an eighth inch carburetor. Uh, monoblock, let's see if that's what that is. I believe that's a monoblock. Uh, somebody had posted that they should have a uh, dual carburetor and my understanding is the dual carburetors were reserved for these bikes here this is a uh, 64 Bonneville 650 and here we have dual carbs and that a pretty bike we'll, we'll do a video on that one if we have time not today but another day but uh, so one of the neat things about this bike is it's a well just gorgeous that's that's one of the key things I just throw that right uh, by the way let's just go through the details it's a four-speed transmission it's about eight and a half to one compression nine, nine to one compression depending on where you uh, read it's got a uh, overhead valve so the cams are down here the uh, I think I mentioned already four-speed transmission the engine and the transmission are all hooked together here let's see what we got on this side just a piece of art in my mind. Just a, here's a tack drive right here. Just an absolutely glorious machine. We'll get into this here in a minute. I'm trying to look at the engine for now. Um, I think I read that the uh, horns were moved from under the seat to right here on, the, on this year. Please notice the blue line. There was some discussion about that. And uh, the tribute bike or clone bike or whatever you all want to call it that has the blue line as well. That's a uh, 205, 2005 Bonneville that's been made to match this motorcycle. And I've got a video about that back there somewhere. But uh, just a glorious, glorious machine. Uh, so let's just move on a little bit more about the details. It's supposed to have eight inch brake in the front, single leading shoe, that's what that is. A very good looking brake by the way. How it works, I don't know. And the rear is supposed to be a, by the way, it's a full shoe on the front. The rear is a uh, seven inch, I believe. Tire on the front is a three and a quarter by 19, a four inch by 18 on the rear. And I love the spoke wheels. 
just a glorious, glorious looking, you know, just, I get all emotional about these things. <laughs> I love them. Uh, moving along, four gallon gas tank, that's about 15 liters. Wheelbase on these hot rods was about 45, 55, 55 and a half inches. It's 1385 millimeters. And seat height was supposed to be about 32 and a half inches, which is 825 millimeters and about five inches of ground clearance. It's on the center stand now, of course. Now here's a really cool number. The uh, weight of this motorcycle is the dry weight it was supposed to be about 363 pounds, or about 165 kilograms. So that with 42 horsepower, that's a pretty good running machine. You know, I, I don't know what the top speeds of these are supposed to be, but I would guess you'd do 100. Who knows? I mean, my Himalayan with uh, 25 horse will do 82, 83, so 24 horse. But isn't that just a gorgeous, gorgeous machine? Uh, so I did learn there were, uh, basically there's a TR6, which is like the generic model for all of this. Then there's the SS model, which I really couldn't find much information on. Um, there was the TR6 SR, which we think this is, which is a road sport version. And uh, that's what we think this vehicle is. And then there was the SC, which uh, we found a couple of different pictures of it. It had high pipes that ran across here. Some had mufflers on it, some had lights, some did not have lights. Uh, there's a big, you know, some people say oh, on the East Coast it came with lights or on the West Coast it came with lights. And, uh, you know, I just don't know the answer to that. And with Triumphs, you know, there are no absolutes. <laughs> The world of Triumph is not full of absolutes. Um, the SC is a competition sport, so SC, but it's competition sport. And uh, they all had a single carburetor, by the way. Um, oh, let's see, what else? Well, let's put away the list and just kind of look the bike over. So to my eye, first off, when I, when I think of a um, beautiful classic motorcycle, this is what comes to my mind. This, you know, the, the pipes sticking out at the angle, the finned heads, the gorgeous tank, the badging, the chrome, you know, the tall, long fender, the, the spoke wheels that are chrome, the drum brakes, you know, the oil tank, the visible oil air filter, I mean, sorry. And just a, just a wonderful, wonderful machine. And this example of one is just, you know, it's been restored and I don't know who did the restoration. I'll try to find that out, maybe I can put that below. But it's just a phenomenal job. Every piece of this thing is just, you know, they've got the uh, boots, the paint job is right, the, the stripe. I can't remember, the. I think it's like Alaskan white and something, something gold. But uh, just absolutely gorgeous. You know, the knee padding, the, you know, this little piece right here, you know, the tank, that thing, this little strip right down the middle, you know, the, just gorgeous everything. Absolutely beautiful in every way. You know, coming back here to the rear end, the Triumph on the seat, the gray top, the gray edge on the bottom, this beautiful tail light, and of course the stripe. You know, moving along here, yeah, you know, I know I'm gonna play with it, the brake. Look at that adjuster on the rear, the shape of that thing, kind of a rocket ship shape thing. And uh, here's the uh, microelectronics from the era <laughs> for the brake light. Very nice, very nice done indeed. I just love it. Center stand on this model. I don't see a side stand. Just a beautiful thing. Now coming up here, I don't know if that's an original mirror or not, but uh, clutch of course, adjuster right there. Ah, that's a horn. Not sure what this is. Maybe the high lows, maybe. Uh, choke on this side, brake, gas. Not sure what any of that is. I'm looking at the gauge, Smith gauges. We've got a guy here just down the road from here. Smith's, Smith's Works with a E, smithsworks.com. And he does uh, restorations and repairs of these gauges if you're interested in anything like that. And meter up here, just phenomenal looking motorcycle. Isn't that just gorgeous? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Petcock on each side of the tank. One open and one closed. I uh, know they're both closed. But just a gorgeous, gorgeous machine. I love the, just look at that front end. Absolutely beautiful. Now I want to just try to show you a little bit of this one real quick. This one says it's a 64. I'm not really good with paint, but uh, this looks like a faded paint. There's the blue stripe. 
you know that's a really good looking machine looks like it's ready for uh, somebody's workshop and then um, I already showed you the Bonneville Oreander absolutely beautiful bikes absolutely beautiful bikes if y'all are interested in anything like this uh, need parts information need a whole motorcycle there's over I think we counted one it was something like 62 or 65 classic bikes in this room alone Tritons Nortons Tritons Nortons Triumphs BSAs more Nortons a whole slew of Triumphs through here uh, I think there's an aerial on the end over there there's a matchless right there uh, 500 Triumphs here uh, I think these are BSAs all the way up along this this area here and over yonder there's some stuff that's not for sale Old Royal Enfields just beautiful beautiful and Baxter's has oh gosh they got they got buildings full of parts for these but I think the biggest parts supplier in North America BaxterCycle.com if you uh, need any help with your project get a hold of these guys anyway if it's a nice day out where you're at get out there and ride my friends wahoo